This week, Ireland's beef industry takes a hit from coronavirus. Miley Cyrus and Ellen DeGeneres adopt rescue dogs. And the vegan leather market is set to reach $89 billion. All this and more on Live Kindly's weekly vegan news. If you're new to our channel, you can subscribe by hitting the leaf icon in the bottom right corner of the video. Click the bell icon to turn on notifications, and please be sure to like and comment below. Singer Miley Cyrus and talk show host Ellen DeGeneres have adopted rescue dogs during the coronavirus quarantine. They spoke about their new companions, Rainbow, known as Bo, and Wally, over video chat on Cyrus's new Instagram Live series, Bright Minded. Cyrus launched the daily Instagram show last month. The live stream enables the singer to give her fans quarantine content during the coronavirus outbreak. So today's episode is focused on animal adoption, foster, animal care. So we have some special guest animal lovers and the star of the show himself. Bo joined Cyrus's clan of seven dogs, three cats, two horses, and two mini horses. Although she started bright-minded as a way to keep her fans entertained during this period of self-isolation and social distancing, Cyrus plans on continuing the show after the coronavirus pandemic ends. I actually was saying when I have my talk show, like, and I can have actual people here, not just uh, playing with like my own self and someone else on a screen, I'm gonna allow animals always on the set where everyone can bring, because I have so many friends that I would have on my show that have the cutest dogs, cutest cats, bunnies and birds and all kinds of things, so I love to have all my friends always be able to bring their animals. DeGeneres recently adopted her rescue poodle, Wally, from the same rescue Cyrus adopted Bo. This is Augie, by the way. Uh, hanging out, and this is Wally. Wally. We got Wally from the same place you got Bo. Oh. And she's gotten so big. The talk show host has three other dogs and three cats. McDonald's' decision to close all of its restaurants in the UK and Ireland due to the coronavirus is causing the Irish beef sector to suffer. Tim Cullinan, president of the Irish Farmers Association, said the chain's closures have greatly affected the food services industry. McDonald's is an important buyer of Irish beef. Its closure is a big blow to the sector. Unfortunately, it is reflective of what is happening across Europe, where closures have had an impact on the food service sector. The fast food chain temporarily closed its UK and Ireland restaurants last month. The chain had previously remained open for delivery, takeout, and drive through options only. But for the safety of its employees, the company decided to close all locations. The Irish meat industry isn't the only sector experiencing setbacks amid the coronavirus crisis. The pandemic is impacting the livestock industry worldwide. A new report from Rabobank revealed China's dairy imports are expected to decrease by 19% this year. The Dutch multinational bank said the current coronavirus outbreak has caused a major decline in demand for dairy. Coming up, sales of meatless meat in the UK increased to £816 million. Six-time Formula One world champion Lewis Hamilton's vegan burger chain, Neat Burger, just opened eight new locations, expanding its delivery service across London. The coronavirus pandemic has forced restaurants, eateries, and other establishments across the UK to temporarily stop table service in order to help stop the spread of coronavirus. As a result of the outbreak, the burger chain is currently providing delivery-only service. The chain announced the new locations on social media. It said it now offers delivery service to the eight new areas. Hamilton launched Neat Burger, dubbed the first plant-based sustainable burger chain of its kind, in collaboration with hospitality organization The Cream Group. It opened its first location in London in September 2019. The London launch was successful, with 1,500 burgers sold within two hours. As someone who follows a plant-based diet, I believe we need a healthier high street option that tastes amazing, but also offers something exciting to those who want to be meat-free every now and again, Hamilton said, adding praise for Beyond Meat, calling the brand an incredible partner. The chain plans to expand internationally, with more than 100 meat burger locations across the world by 2020. The number of Americans who say they're eating vegan has increased by more than 3,000% over the past 15 years. A new study by analytics company Ipsos Retail Performance states 9.7 million people in the U.S. are now turning to a plant-based lifestyle. In 2004, a survey by Time and CNN found there were only 290,000 people who called themselves vegan or plant-based. Ipsos compiled the search data results state by state to better understand the diet in each state. 
States with higher numbers of people eating vegan in 2019 include California, Oregon, Washington, Nevada, and New York. Those living in North Dakota, South Dakota, and Mississippi consistently registered the lowest levels of interest in a plant-based diet. Coming up, Starbucks moves closer to eliminating the upcharge on vegan milk options. United Arab Emirates-based frozen food company Healthy Farm is on a mission to help more people buy vegan food. Owned by Middle Eastern manufacturers Global Food Industries, Healthy Farm aims to convert 500,000 consumers to plant-based eating. Per Arabian Business, Jasek Pliwa, the brand's general manager, said Healthy Farm anticipates that 15 to 20 percent of meat consumption in the UAE and the region will be plant-based by 2025. Gulf Food Awards is the most innovative product and Healthy Farm, a uh, plant-based protein um, burger, is the one which uh, received the award. So for us it's, it's that honor, as I said. It's a third year in a row when we receive that award. It plans to make 50% of its portfolio plant-based to meet rising demand. According to Pliwa, plant-based protein is gaining preference across the globe as consumers cut back on meat for health, the environment, and animal welfare reasons. He added that the world may face more food shortages if we continue to rely on animal agriculture. Sales of meat-free meat in the UK grew to 816 million pounds according to a new report from global market research firm Mintel. The report revealed the sale of meat-free products between 2014 and 2019. Researchers expect the number to grow to more than 1.1 billion pounds by 2024. The number of Brits who have consumed meat-free foods has grown from 50% in 2017 to 56% in 2019. According to the report, the number of meat eaters who have reduced or limited their meat intake has also increased from 28% in 2017 to 39% in 2019. Mintel's research revealed 42% of women are more likely to have limited or reduced their meat intake compared to 36% of men. Kate Vliestra, Mintel Global Food and Drink Analyst, says one possible reason Brits are eating more meat-free food products is that more people are adopting a flexitarian diet. Starbucks has responded to demands to eliminate upcharges on vegan milk. International animal rights organization PETA purchased one share of Starbucks stock last December and asked about removing the upcharge during the annual shareholders meeting. PETA said Starbucks has already acknowledged the link between dairy products and carbon dioxide emissions. Roz Brewer, Starbucks chief operating officer, said that Starbucks hopes to get rid of the extra charge. As you know, alternative milk costs more than dairy. While there's no single factor in pricing decisions, we expect costs to come down as the supply chain for plant-based options matures. And as the costs come down, we can pass this on to our customers. Former President Barack Obama took to Twitter recently to address the climate crisis. This comes in response to the Trump administration's rollback of the nation's biggest effort to combat climate change. The Trump administration released new fuel efficiency standards for cars and trucks. In a win for the oil and gas industries, the rollback spares automakers from having to meet gas mileage and emissions requirements that were mandated in 2012. President Obama wanted to make the fleet corporate fuel efficiency average 54 miles to the gallon in 2025. Mr. Trump says, nah, we're going to freeze it at 2020 levels at 37 miles to the gallon. We've seen all too terribly the consequences of those who denied warnings of a pandemic. We can't afford any more consequences of climate denial. All of us, especially young people, have to demand better of our government at every level and vote this fall. There will likely be litigation by environmental groups challenging the loosened fuel economy standards. Gutting the clean car standards makes no sense. It will harm the air we breathe, stall progress in fighting the climate crisis, and increase the cost of driving. We'll be seeing the Trump administration in court, Gina McCarthy, president of the Natural Resources Defense Council, said in a statement. Since inauguration, we've sued the Trump administration about once every 10 days. Some of these lawsuits named Donald Trump himself as the defendant. Here's the deal. You can sue a president for the same reason you would sue anyone else, because they broke the law. A new report says the vegan leather market will be worth $89.6 billion by 2025. 
According to the study by Infinium Global Research, the vegan leather industry will experience a compound annual growth rate of 49.9% from 2019 to 2025. The report says the booming vegan leather market is driven by a range of factors. These include evolving consumer trends, a growing awareness about the environmental impact of traditional leather, and rising demands for animal-free products. There are a number of vegan leather alternatives on the market. Innovative companies are now creating leather from pineapple leaf fiber, mushrooms, corn, and even coffee and wine. Infinium Global Research suggests the growing demand from the footwear sector will be a key factor propelling growth in the alternative leather industry moving forward. That's it for today. What are your thoughts on former President Barack Obama's tweet? Let us know in the comments below. Remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell. We'll see you again next week for Live Kindly's weekly vegan news.